Hello and welcome to City Year. My name is Joe Choinsky. And I'm Rachel Halpin and we're both proud core members serving with City Year Chicago. You're watching a live interactive call-in television program brought to you on Can TV 21. During the next 25 minutes, we invite you to call in with your questions for us or our guests at 312-738-1060. And for any of those of you that have not watched before or are not familiar with City Year, City Year is a nonprofit organization that unites young people of all backgrounds to do a year of full time service and leadership development, giving them the opportunity to change the world. City Year's vision is that one day all young people will be asking each other, Where are you going to do your year of service? Here in Chicago, our core members, ages 17 to 24 years old, like Rachel and myself, serve as literacy tutors and role models uh, to students in Chicago public schools. We also engage community members in large-scale physical service days where we might do things like uh, painting murals, doing some landscaping, even light construction. Uh, we do some painting of, of a lot of schools that we work in um, as a great way to transform neighborhoods throughout the city. Through the course of our 10-month service term, uh, each core member performs over 1,700 hours of service and earns nearly $5,000 uh, to of an education award. For more information about City Year, the service we provide Chicago, and information on how to get involved, please visit us on the web at www.cityyear.org slash Chicago. There are a lot of different ways to get involved, whether you're interested in serving with us for a day or joining the Corps for a whole year. All the information you need can be found on our website. Again, my name is Joe Choinsky with City Year Chicago. Rachel's taken over the phone lines, and again, uh, our lines are going to be open during the entire show, so if you have any questions, call in at 312-738-1060. We would love to hear from you. Joining us now is Dominique Battle, a program manager at City of Chicago. Dominique, thanks so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Uh, so Dominique, this is the question we start off with everybody. Uh, everybody's interview starts with this. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, about yourself? Okay. Uh, I am a program manager with City Year Chicago. I am from Chicago, the southeast side. Uh, grew up along the lake my whole life. Um, I have a daughter that is four years old and a lovely husband, um, and we reside in High Park. Awesome. Uh, so what's your role? You said you're a program manager. Uh, at City of Chicago. What exactly does that mean? What's your role like? Well, um, a program manager is responsible um, for school-based. I'm a school-based program manager. We are responsible for managing two uh, or more teams um, of young people that serve in a school every day. Okay. Uh, and r remember, our phone lines are open at, at 312-738-1060. So how long have you been a program manager for? About eight months. This is my first year being a program manager. Okay. And, and how did you find City Year? Um, I actually served in the Corps 2002 to 2003. Um, I was actually searching fastweb.com, I believe, <laughs> and found uh, City Year. I went to... Um, an info session and just the inspirational video kind of caught me. And right. Fast Web is like a like a scholarship search it engine. Is, it is. It is a scholarship mm -hmm. uh, search engine. All right. And uh, what th this is sort of a question that, that we like to ask people because it is sort of a big undertaking. So what first inspired you to do a year of full time service? Well, I think the fact that City Year offered the weekly stipend uh, and the lump sum of education award at the end it actually allowed me to do the volunteer service whereas I had to work mm -hmm. all all prior to that so I didn't have volunteer experience and the fact that it dealt with children so all right uh, so you've been gone from city you said you served in 2002 so you've been gone for about eight years now yes. eight, seven seven eight years yes. What was like coming back to an organization that you've been gone from for a while what sort of things had changed if anything well um, I believe the organization has grown. Um, I was so excited to come back and see the things that they expanded on. I was glad to see the new things and the tools that were there and readily available for the Corps to use. I, I think the program has grown really, really well. Alright, so I understand City will be putting on a spring break camp for CPS students uh, in about a week. So next week, I think it starts on Monday, right? Yes. Uh, so what's your role in the camp planning process? Well, I am the staff point for Camp City Year. So I oversee the 13 individuals that um, have put everything together for camp. Uh, mostly I look to deal with the outside relationships and manage that. Um, I also manage the financial side and the budget, trying to keep us within uh, the restraints that we have. 
Yeah, I bet when you have 13 creative core members, you got a lot of a lot of reigning in to do. Uh, so, tell us our viewers a little bit more about the camps. How exactly does this work? You know, what what where are the the students from? What's what's the process of putting on the camps? Sure, uh, we have 11 elementary schools that we are serving, and we are taking about 25 students from each of those 11 elementary schools. We have six on the south side and five on the west side. In addition to that, we are taking uh, park district children from the sites that we're at. So we um, will have somewhere between 300 and um, 318 campers. Wow. Well, it looks like we have a caller. So, uh, hello, you're on the air with City Air. Hello, hello what's your question? Hello? Yes, um, about the camp. I want to know, is that an overnight camp? Thank you for your question. Uh, Dominique? Good question. Uh, we actually have kind of three camps going on. There are two day camps, one on the south side, one on the west side, and then there's a Heroes Overnight Camp. So I am not over the Heroes Overnight Camp, but there is one. All right, and then the the, the day camp is for third to fifth graders, right? Correct. And then Heroes Camp is for sixth to eighth graders. Correct. All right, so... Uh, so why is it so important that City Air puts on a spring break camp like this? I mean, wouldn't a lot of students just like to go off and do whatever they feel like on, on their spring break? Well, I think it's huge because it's twofold. Uh, one is for our core members. It's an excellent leadership opportunity for our core members because they take it on and they plan everything. I just oversee it. And then for the children that we serve, we get to see them every day uh, on a regular basis, kind of in a specific model of things. This allows our core members and our kids to really get creative and break out of the everyday mold. So I think it's really important to have that outlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to meet some new students and sort of, you know, just get to see a different part of, of the service. Yes. Uh, so putting on a camp for over 300 kids is, is a huge undertaking. Um, you, you mentioned that you have a team of 13 core members. How long have you been planning? What's the planning process look like? You know, what, how, how far out has this gone before we've gotten to the point that we're at a week out from camp? Sure. Uh, we began this process early December. So we took these 13 individuals, kind of got them to know each other a little bit better and kind of understood our timeline. Uh, when we came back in January, we kind of dug right into things. And so it becomes, okay, what what's the theme? How are we going to do that? Then it becomes what are the lesson plans that we're doing? Are we doing field trips? So it's really a, a big undertaking. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, so camp starts on Monday, as we've said before. Yes. Um, months of planning uh, on, on, have gone by. What are you most excited for as the start of, with the start of camps coming? I am most excited to go through the week really successfully, have our core members have a great experience, have our students have a great experience, and at the end, hear really great things from both of those groups. I just want this to be a great experience for everyone. Are you nervous about anything with camps coming up? No, I just, I just want everything to go as well as it can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're almost out of time for this segment, um, and so we need to give you the boot. Um, don't worry, we're not going to kick you or anything, but this is our boot. You'll see it has signatures all over it. Uh, as you know, and as maybe some of our viewers know by now, City Air Corps members wear uh, Timberland boots as they go through their service. Uh, you know, it's really great for physical service because yes. it supports your feet as, as you're going through your, uh, your different projects. Uh, but, you know, it's also symbolic of the service that we do every day in the schools. Uh, so this boot is filled with potential questions for you. And that probably makes you a little nervous. You know, all the, all the other ones we told you, this one's, this one's a surprise. <laughs> uh, so what you can do is you can go ahead and grab a question from there, give it to me, um, and then I will ask, it, ask you it. Um, and then you get a chance to sign the boot as one of our guests. Okay. All right. This is a good one. Uh, since it's almost baseball season, Cubs or White Sox? White Sox because I'm from the south side? Okay, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. I, you know, I think we actually have time for one more. I know that, I know that wasn't the deal, but we have we have a little extra time. So, all right, this this is another good one. I, I wrote them all, so of course, of course, they're I think they're good. good. But uh, if Camp City was a food, what food would it be? I'd say it would be a supreme pizza. A supreme pizza? Why is that? You get some of everything all in one place. <laughs> Excellent. 
that well, those were both great answers. Um, I'm in favor of the socks too. So <laughs> uh, go ahead and sign the boot and, and thanks for joining us um, and sharing with your uh, with us about your city year experience, um, your experience coming back to city year and your experience planning Camp City Year uh, with, with our viewers. So now after a short break, we will continue with City Year, Give a Year, Change the World. We around since the beginning of time. Ask not what your country can do for you. Over the years, I've had many faces. Over the years, I've had many looks. I have a dream. But I've always had the same goals. We have to make this world a better place by helping those who need it most. To never turn my back when things get tough. And to show that positive can always overpower negative. I am change. And this is what I wear. Welcome back. I am still Joe Choinsky with City Air Chicago. The phone lines are open. Uh, joining us now is Lauren Williams, a core member serving at Sherman School of Excellence in the Englewood community. Uh, Lauren, thanks for joining us tonight. No problem. Thanks, Joe. Uh, so, Lauren, I, we start every interview with this question, just sort of lay things out right from the start. Let's start with the basics. Who are you? Where are you from? Uh, my name's Lauren. I'm 24 years old, and I'm originally born and raised uh, Washingtonian in the greater Maryland, uh, D.C. region. Uh, fun fact, I love hockey. Love hockey. I love hockey too. Good. What's your favorite team? Okay. Washington Capitals. Washington All Capitals. All the way. I, Go I probably should have guessed that. <laughs> uh, so what were you doing before you joined City Year? Sure. Um, I graduated college in 2007 and immediately following college, I was pressed for cash so I just jumped right into a full-time job. I worked for a real estate agent uh, taking phone calls, doing busy work, and it just wasn't my path so eventually it led me to City Year. Great. And why did you decide to do City Year Chicago instead of City Year DC? You know, I never left the DC area, um, and this is you know the furthest west I've ever been. And for me, it was like I needed to uh, leave my hometown to you know one experience um, other parts of the area. But you know, it being in Chicago has really helped me appreciate um, my hometown a lot more. And I gotta say, I love Chicago. This has been a great experience. I'm I don't regret it one bit. Yeah, I love Chicago too. You know, I was. I had the option to go to City Year Detroit, but I, I picked Chicago, and nice. I'm glad I did. Uh, so what is your role here at City Year? Sure. I'm a first-year core member, um, and I was assigned to the Sherman School of Excellence in the Inglewood community, as you mentioned. Um, at Sherman, I'm a tutor for uh, third graders, and then in the afternoon, I run an after-school program for uh, third, fourth, and fifth graders. Uh, I also work alongside a core member at Sherman, and we plan all these service projects and events that um, pertain to the school throughout the year. So that sounds like a lot of work already, but I, I understand that you are also uh, the core member leader of spring break camps uh, sure. that Dominique and I were just talking about. So what kind of things do you do as the camp director for, for city year uh, spring break camps? Sure. Um, my job, uh, in a nutshell, is I oversee all aspects of camp. Um, my main priority is the committee. I make sure that um, everyone is following their work agendas and that they have the resources that they need to do our job as a um, committee to plan a successful camps. Um, and then I do work closely with Dominique to make sure that um, all the other aspects of camp outside of our committee and outside of city are also working smoothly. Um, and then I step in and troubleshoot when I can and just pick up the pieces to make sure that all of our bases are covered um, come time for camps. That, that sounds like a lot of work. So uh, <laughs> I know that city or core members already work pretty much an average of 45 hours a week. Um, so. What has your schedule looked like as you've been taking on this extra role? Has that been a lot of extra hours for you? When <laughs> when, when do you find the time when you're already working from you know eight to five thirty every day? Um, I'm embarrassed to say how much time I you know I have been working. Um, what I can say is I've put a lot of time into camps. It's my first priority right now. I think what's helped me is. Like I said, moving from the Washington, D.C. area and being here and not knowing anyone, it's made me like fully committed to uh, my my um, part with City Year. So right now, like I'm 100 percent committed to camps just because I can afford that commitment because mm -hmm. I'm new to Chicago. Um, so as as embarrassed as I am to say it, at, at times this is my life. Sure. 
Sure. And I mean, it's it's going to really pay off next week, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just living it up and, you know, no regrets. I'm just kind of giving it my all so far. Yeah. All right. So now let's get into the really interesting stuff. We're going to talk about the actual camp a little bit. So what is the theme of this year's spring break camp going to be? So our camp name is Mission Possible Get Green, Get Going. Um, and what that means is campers arrive to camp as secret agents. And so they're secret agents and their mission is to learn how to live uh, an environmentally friendly lifestyle while also making healthy um, life choices like eating right and staying fit. Get green, get going. Right. And so I know we're going to have programming all week. We're going to have lots of great activities. What is what are some of the ways that this theme is going to work itself into the, that programming throughout the week? Sure. Um, we Every activity we have planned um, has a lesson behind it about ways they can make healthy eating choices or how they can um, stay fit. Every morning when they arrive, we're either going to be doing um, what we call uh, physical training or just, you know, really easy exercises. I think one morning we're playing the cha-cha slides so that they can have fun and dance and, um, you know, they don't realize it, but they're actually making healthy uh, choices while dancing. And I also want to mention that our committee has um, really made a push to make our whole camps green by instead of using paper um, to decorate our camps, we've actually been acquiring cardboard boxes um, for uh, designing and decorating things around the facility facilities. Um, and all of our name tags will be cut out of cereal boxes. So as a committee, we've decided to make this a green effort as well. That was really cool. I, I actually saw those boxes the other day <laughs> and something of a, a box avalanche from, from the closet. But Yeah, uh, we've been moving things around the office. It's getting kind of crazy there. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's al it's almost time, so no more no more storing yeah. stuff. We get to use it. But uh, uh, So without spoiling any surprises for the campers, what kind of activities can they expect to see at Camp City or next week? Yeah, I think one thing that we're really excited about is uh, we have a trip planned for the Museum of Science and Industry on Wednesday. Um, and it's going to be an all-day event. Um, the buses are going straight to the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, the campers will have a chance to go through all parts of the museum, but one thing we're really excited is the You the Experience exhibit, where we're going to actually have them participate in more interactive um, curriculum based on what we've been talking about in camps. Um, I know everyone talks about the human hamster wheel, so mm -hmm. campers will actually get a chance to do that and really it, get involved in an interactive way about the things they've been learning through camp throughout the week. That's awesome. I, I love going to the museum. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, I'm pretty excited about that myself. Just and <laughs> Science Storms along. is open, so we're going to see Science Storms, so oh, there's a lot going on on Wednesday. All right, and uh, remember, viewers, our phone lines are open. If you have a question for Lauren or I, uh, please call in at 312-738-1060. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, so will there be any special guests coming by camp next week? Yes, we, um, we have a few guests. Um, some to mention, we have the Illinois Fishery visiting, as well as the Shedd Aquarium, and we have Best Friends Humane Society. And those three organizations are going to touch on a similar topic. They're going to bring in, um, not all of them, but some of them are bringing in live animals, and they both won't be, all, all three of them won't necessarily be at both sites, um, but we're going to um, kind of bounce back and forth throughout the week between our two campsites. And we're going to be teaching kids how to, how to um, protect our ecosystem and how we can make choices that um, better um, animals we interact with every day and animals we don't necessarily interact with every day but affect um, our environment. Sure. And we're also excited to have Bob Love at Foster Park on the south side who is a Chicago Bulls legend and he'll be kind of sharing how staying fit in his career with basketball has really um, set him up for success and made his life better. Yeah, that'll be that'll be really inspirational. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be they'll be pretty excited about that. I, again, I'm excited about yeah. it. So, uh, so as Dominique mentioned, there's going to be 300 plus students. Um, and there's going to be all these projects going on. So where will these these camps take place? I mean, the city or office surely can't accommodate mm. this type of uh, production. Yeah, we uh, we have um, had a fortunate relationship with the Chicago Park Districts. They have provided two camps for us. For um, campers on the south side, we have Foster Park, and for campers on the west side, we have Fosco Park. That's a little confusing. Yeah, we Foster have and Foss Fosco. and Foss, but <laughs> Foster Fosco. It took me a while to like, you know, a good week before I could actually say them right, but Foster and Fosco. All right, so, and uh, I think part of being at City Year is having your space that you work in already sort of set up and having the right tools you need around. So what types of things uh, is the camps committee going to need to do to get these spaces ready to, to accommodate camps? 
it there's a lot of prep work involved i think we're definitely at the stage as a committee where we're uh this is our main priority to get prepared material wise for these spaces um one thing we're concerned about is all the programs we've designed um involve um you know for example we're doing fitness monopoly where we're actually making a live board game um with a a jumbo jumbo sized dice so for example i know tonight uh, certain committee members are at the office making a dice out of cardboard boxes that kids are gonna you know get to throw um we have uh, decoration preparations to do uh, we're making we're cutting out signs and decorating signs to welcome all the schools to our campsites there's, like you mentioned, the closets are packed and, you know, we're right now, literally, uh, core members are in the office sorting these materials, cutting them out and prepping them. And then Friday, we're going to invite the core to help us finish the job. Awesome. Uh, so, and you've talked about the core helping with the, the planning process. There's core members that are actually on the planning committee, but there's 125 core members at City of Chicago. What roles will they be filling during the actual week of camp? Sure. Um, so I heard you mention with Dominique the Heroes Camp. So uh, a third of our core members will be at the Heroes Camp, which is an overnight um, outside of the city of Chicago. Um, the other remaining two thirds will be split between Fosco and Foster Park. Um, their main responsibility as core members is team leaders. So as a team leader, um, they're assigned nine to 12 students and they guide them through the week with their missions and activities and arts and crafts um, to make the experience enjoyable for them. And then we also have um, core members helping us facilitate arts and crafts, relay races, games, lessons. Um, and then of course we will be putting core members to work with food preparation, setup, um, breakdown, you name it, it's a city or team effort. Yeah, so it looks like there's a lot of roles <laughs> so to be filled but you, you guys have it all figured out. Uh, so we're actually almost out of time uh, for for your segment. So we're giving you the Ooh. boot, the dreaded boot. Um, I think you, I think you already know the drill. But uh, so we're gonna allow you to grab a question from the boot. You can hand it to me. I'll ask it, uh, ask you the question, and then once you answer it, you'll have a chance to sign the boot as one of our esteemed guests on the, the city or TV show. Cool. Uh, so go ahead and grab a question. All right. Hope Dominique didn't take all the good ones, <laughs> but uh, oh. So what will be the first thing you do when Camp City Year is over? You've been planning for, oh for months. Goodness. What's going to be the first thing you do to relax? Um, so this is a funny question because I'm, I, I worry that my answer is boring, but I think the first thing I'm going to do after camps is clean up. <laughs> um, I think there's just going to be a lot of things that needs to be um, broken down. I think, uh, you know, a city or motto is we need to leave spaces better than we found it. So I, unfortunately, I think I'm going to be at the campsites making sure that those camps are better than we found them. After that, I'd like to say I'm doing something exciting. I will probably be sleeping. Yeah, probably catch, the whole week. And after, catching up after on that. hockey highlights because I haven't been watching anything for the last three weeks. So. Sure. All right, good answer. So uh, thanks for coming here tonight, taking the time, um, and sharing with us about your city experience and your experience planning camps. Cool. Uh, so before we leave you this... Oh, and, and you can go ahead and sign oh, the book. Oh, thank you. Uh, so before we leave this evening, uh, we'd like to go into a segment we call our Service Spotlight. Uh, where we highlight a part of our service. We serve Chicago in many different ways, uh, each of which is an equally important part of City Year Chicago's service. This week, the service spotlight shines on the Camp City Year t-shirt graphic. Each year, Camp City Year has a different theme which is chosen through a contest. Core members submit their ideas for a theme graphic and the winner is chosen through a vote. Out of all the submissions, Mission Possible Get Green Get Going was the 2010 winner. Here you see this year's t-shirt graphic, which will appear on a shirt given to each camper. The same theme will tie together the events and activities throughout the whole week. Campers can expect some spy-like mystery as they have fun doing activities that focus on being active and protecting the environment. We're running out of time for tonight, so thanks for tuning in to City Year, Give a Year, Change the World. Uh, please tune in next week for our final episode of the year. Uh, it'll be at 6.30 right here on Can TV Channel 21. Uh, please call in with your questions, and you can look forward to seeing another uh, core member guest and another special guest. Uh, next week, we're going to have uh, Ted Gibbs, the uh, commissioner of the Serve Illinois Commission. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about how you can give a year and change the world with City Year Chicago, please visit us on the web at www.cityyear.org slash join us. Uh, or you can call our recruitment manager at 312-423-7179. Thanks for watching and we will see you next week.